Hi, my name is Kim Kirchman, and today I'm going to demonstrate um, a slab tumbler. Um, I'm starting with a tumbler template. I've cut these out of um, plastic cutting boards. Um, they're pretty inexpensive. I bought them at the dollar store. They're permanent. They're easy to cut with a pair of scissors, and they're consistent. So this is the form I started with. And what I did is I used that to trace on a piece of newsprint and I created a really simple um, design uh, with underglazes that I painted on newsprint. So this is completely dry at this point and I'm gonna get ready to transfer this onto a slab. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and put slip on this. I've got a, a slip that I use in my wood kiln, it's called Hogue. Any kind of slip would work anything that's white. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and paint this on in pretty broad strokes, pretty loosely. I don't wanna go back and forth on the design because I could probably um, smear it. And I wanna just put that on so it has enough time to dry to the leather hard state. So while that's drying, I'm gonna come over here to my slab that I've prepared. And I roll this out on a slab roller, but this slab is actually a little bit too thick. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and thin it out by throwing it out. So I'm just gonna take it and toss it gently um, on my piece of drywall and essentially stretch this out a bit. And when it gets to be about a quarter of an inch or a little bit less, uh, that's when I'm going to do the final rolling with a rolling pin just to, to even it out. So after I do that, it's time to compress the surface. So what I use to compress the surface is just a, a little silicone rib. This is actually very soft and um, doesn't mar the clay. And I need to go in a couple of different directions. So I'm gonna go one way and then perpendicular. And I'm actually gonna turn the slab over and do the other side. Now the surface that I'm working on is drywall. I just got a scrap of two by two drywall at Home Depot and used um, some duct tape to seal the edges because plaster is not really good with clay. It's an excellent working surface because it doesn't put any texture on the clay at all. So I'm gonna make sure that's very smooth. And I'm gonna look back over here at my um, slip transfer design. And um, for the most part, it's getting pretty much close to the transfer state. You'll notice there's some wrinkles on the paper. The paper wrinkles in the grain of the paper. So that means when I pick this up, I'll probably lay this side down first onto my slab and then just roll it down. It'll be pretty smooth. Um, it's important when you're putting this transfer onto the piece um, of clay that you do it in one um, quick motion. It's very similar to working with a temporary tattoo. So I'm gonna pick this up by the corners and bring it over to my slab and lay the corners down first and just roll the piece of paper gently on top of the clay. So once that's done, I'm gonna use my rib and I'm gonna go ahead and rip this out. I'm gonna make sure all the air bubbles are out and the clay, the transfer sheet is laying completely on the clay itself. That's pretty good. And you can see certain areas right here are kind of dry. Um, the water from the clay will actually um, absorb into this newsprint and that'll allow the slip to completely transfer off the newsprint itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this out of the way. Now I'm going to take my knife. This is a Dolan knife. Um, I like this knife because it has a small sharp blade and it, it's really easy to cut with. And I'm going to go ahead and cut the top of this and just follow the contour of the newsprint. And just lay this aside. And do the same for the bottom. And in a similar fashion to the video on making the coffee cup, I'm gonna go ahead and bevel the side. So I pulled my knife at a 45 degree angle and I hold down here and I just pull the knife towards me. Move that clay. And I'm gonna do the same thing, the same direction on the opposite side. 
essentially what I'm making is a kind of a graduated cylinder. Um, so it's a pretty simple shape. And I came up with these shapes um, by just cutting out pieces of paper um, with a pair of scissors and then just sort of rolling them together and coming up with a scale and a size that I kind of liked. Once that's cut out, I'm gonna go ahead and use my scoring rib, which is a serrated rib, and score this edge. And with the paper still on the clay slab, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the slab over and score the other side. You wanna make sure the scoring is uh, pretty thorough because that's actually acts as Velcro and sort of locks the sides of the clay together. Once it's scored, I'm gonna hit use a little clay slip. This is my slip uh, mixture that I have dry clay body um, that I mix up with vinegar. I'm just gonna apply that on the edge with a brush. It's pretty thin. And I'm gonna take my rib and just sort of rib off the excess. So now I've got this edge right here. This is the lip of the pot, and I need to start working on that um, prior to putting this together because it's flat right now. It's very easy to do. So I'm gonna take my sponge, which is damp. Um, it's not wet. All the water's been squeezed out of it. I'm just gonna lightly run it along the top. And then I'm gonna take my finger and compress that top. That creates a nice bevel which when this is formed, it'll be towards the inside of the pot and makes a much more comfortable lip to drink off. So I'm gonna smooth this out. And now I'm gonna get ready to turn this over and remove the, the transfer. So you can see now the paper is completely saturated and I know that it's ready to remove. I'll give it one more smoothing with my rib, just to make sure that it's made good contact, that the image has with the surface of the clay. And that um, when I pull the paper off, it'll leave the image behind on the clay surface. So I'm gonna take my tool, this knife, and I just ease it under the first corner so I can grab hold of that. And then I just pull it back. And you can see that the image is pretty clear. Sometimes the image stays back behind on the newsprint. So I'm just gonna take my rib and squeegee that out. And I keep checking. And as long as you don't remove the whole entire transfer all at once, um, the registration stays straight and um, you can smooth it down again. Now it's a pretty simple design. It's kind of a stylized flower. Um, I'm inspired by a lot of flower designs that I grow in my own garden. And I also think about um, certain things when I'm picking the colors um, that I use on the surface. I think about um, a little bit of color theory. In the case of this piece, um, I'm using blue and orange, which are complements on the color wheel, which I think is kind of interesting. The other thing too, I know when this fires in my wood kiln that the surface of the clay, the background of the clay will be uh, fairly orange. So those blue flowers will really pop. And so this is just the spent use print. I'll put that aside. And so I can pick this up without really smearing the design. I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with my torch. just for a few seconds to set that design so it um, doesn't move too much. And then I'm just gonna pick up this pot um, by its corners and put it on my turntable. And you can see that the clay is really soft. Um, but once I get this turned into sort of a cylinder kind of shape, um, it's a lot stronger. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just tack the seam down with my fingers lightly. Uh, this is not a final seam yet. Um, it needs to be worked quite a bit, but it's just enough to get it tacked down so the piece does not collapse because the clay is quite soft at this stage. So I'm going to move that and sort of straighten it up a bit. And I'm going to go ahead and take this piece of um, PVC pipe and I'm going to put it inside the pot um, right 
behind the seam. And the reason I'm doing that is because I can pop this out and it gives me a pretty solid um, material to push my finger against so I can actually close the seam up and uh, join the clay pretty well there. So I start by tamping it down with my fingers lightly and kind of pressing with a little bit more force. But you can see I just went over it a couple times. It wasn't really hard. And then I'm going to take my pony roller, um, which needs to be cleaned off just a bit. And I'm going to go ahead and use that to roll on the surface of the clay. So that's going to be real light. I want to put a lot of pressure on it. What I'm really trying to do is just seal that seam uh, so it doesn't come apart in the firing. Um, the seams on slabs are quite important because anytime you join clay, that's a potential structural weakness in the pot. And it's really important that you spend a lot of time working on those seams and making sure they're secure. So now in order to go into the inside to make sure the seam is sort of sealed up at the bottom, I'm gonna use this wooden modeling tool and I can stick it in there pretty far and I'm just gonna lightly stroke the interior of the form to kind of smooth that clay together. Now, my pot at this point is pretty ready to start shaping. So it's essentially an upside down cup. Um, it has a narrow base and I'm gonna wanna form this so it actually has a little bit wider base so it has a little more stability when you're using it. So I'm going to turn the seam towards me uh, because I wanna have that um, right in between a square and I'm just going to take my fingers and I'm holding the top and I'm just sort of squaring off the top. And I just move this around lightly and try to make it as even as possible. Now because this is a handmade cup, if it's not quite even, it's okay. Um, there's a always a little variation, which is fine. So now I'm going to try to shape this because the clay is soft and I could get my hand in there and start stretching the clay out of it. So I'm just gonna wet my fingers and I'm just gonna take my finger and sort of rub it on the inside of the clay. And I wanna do that to start creating volume in the bottom of the cup and also a little width on the foot, as I said before, just for the stability. And when I'm stretching out, I'm very careful in the seam area because that's an area that wants to tear open, especially at the state. So I'm gonna go ahead and stretch that out a little bit more. And you can see that the volume of the pot is definitely changing. Um, and that's kind of important. So I'm gonna move this out of the way. So now I've got this fairly well uh, shaped. I'm gonna go ahead and one more time and stretch this foot ring out. I just put, put my fingers on top, kind of round that out. And you can see how that stretches almost like a pitcher spout. And that gives me a much wider base where when I turn this right side up, it'll be more stable. So at this point, it's time to use my torch again and kind of dry the bottom. And I'm not trying to dry the bottom to uh, bone dry, but what I'm trying to do is to get into the leather hard state. And you can see that there's still a little bit of flexibility there, but it's a lot um, harder than it was before. At this point, I'm gonna take out some of this material in between the feet. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use my knife and sort of scallop these out. And I try to scallop it out relatively even. Sometimes that's a little more easier said than done, but. The good thing about clay is there's a lot of flexibility still at this stage, so any kind of mistakes that are made at this point are easy to fix. So I've removed that bit of clay. I'm gonna kind of straighten this up a little bit more because I have one more chance to do that before I hit it again with a torch. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit it, especially underneath this area because what I'm gonna do is lay a slab on top of this to create the base of the pot. I'm gonna use this torch. So I've got some clay over here, uh, some scraps, and I'll just cut um, a square of clay out, something a bit more than I need, really. 
and it's a little bit thick. So I'm going to take this little PVC pipe and roll it out a little thinner and compress it a bit and go ahead and just lay it over on the top of my piece. So the reason I'm doing this is I'm actually going to take an impression from the base of this pot and transfer it onto the slab and that'll give me um, an idea of how much clay I need to cut out. So I just lay it on here gently and I'm just going to gently take my finger and kind of roll the clay down. So it makes an impression of the feet of the cylinder. And the area where my seam is, I'm going to take a tool and just make a mark because I know this lines up with the seam. Now that mark is only so I, when I put this base back on, it's really easy to fit it. So I'm going to take it off. And you can see that there's clearly a mark all the way around here. And I'm going to use that as a guide for cutting. But when I cut, um, I'm going to cut the clay a little bit to the outside of the line, about a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch, because I want to have a little extra clay. Now, um, it's always important to cut curves with a, a needle tool. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So it's cut out kind of loosely. Once again, um, you want to be fairly precise, but if you cut a little bit too small or a little too large, it's an easy fix. So now I've got a piece of clay like this, which is loosely based on my, uh, the shape of my pot, and you can see that it'll clearly fit on top. So at this point, it's not ready to join yet. I need to do a little finishing. These edges are quite rough, so I'm going to use um, my sponge and go ahead and Soften the edges. And I do that on the, the top, top and also the bottom of this. I'm soften this edge. And now it's ready to score. So I'm going to go ahead and use my scoring room and just score around this edge and score on this edge of the pot to join them together. I'm just going to take the edge of this. And this scoring rib is relatively small, but it's still quite large for the base of this pot. And it's important when you score that you score in a couple of different directions. So you really scratch that surface up quite a bit. Um, and what I can do is just take my finger and sort of smooth that out. So when you look in the inside of the tumbler, you don't see any score marks. I'm gonna go ahead and score this. One of the things about using a torch on the clay, it initially dries it out quite a bit, but the clay still has quite a bit of moisture. And so the moisture in the interior of the slab sort of migrates out and re-softens the clay to a certain extent. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my slip and add it to this edge. I paint on a light coating of it. And I go ahead and take my fingers and wipe out any excess in there. So now this is ready to apply. And I'm gonna line up my dot with my seam. Apply this on the top. Carefully fit it with my fingers. Just sort of roll it in there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start sculpting this foot around the edge of the cup. I like working with soft slabs quite a bit because uh, what ends up happening is when I turn this over, I'm going to be able to stretch the volume out quite a bit at the top because the clay is still quite wet and malleable. So that's one of the reasons why I like to go fast on the bottom because I don't want the clay to start drying out at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and sort of keep forming these with my fingers. And I'm wanting to roll that clay over the edge of the cup because I know that it's going to make a nice, strong seal uh, that will not come apart in the firing. So once that's pretty roughed in, I'm going to take my finger and kind of stroke the bottom to really smooth it against the walls. 
And anytime I'm doing one thing on one side, I'm always supporting with my hands on the other. So that's quite important. So go ahead and do that. And at this point, it's almost ready to turn over. Um, if I were to turn it now, the clay is really wet and almost sticky. So I'm gonna have to hit it with a torch again. And then it's time to carefully flip it. So I've got this pot um, that still needs to be sealed on the interior of the pot. So I'm gonna go use this tool right here because I can reach right inside and stroke and that seam out. And you can see that the clay is really wiggly at this point. So it's flat right here and I want this to bell out because um, this is a drinking cup and it needs to have some volume in it. So I'm gonna use my soft rib and the reason I use this rib is it has a really, it's a shaping tool as well as a smoothing tool and it's got this great curve here and I'm gonna use that curve to create a curve in my cup. So I start at the top with my hand on the outside, um, counter a counterbalance to the pressure on the interior of the cup and I'm gonna turn this slightly. And kind of gradually walk, work myself around. Now, anytime you're stretching the clay out, you don't wanna stretch the clay all at once. You wanna stretch it in a couple, a series of stretching. It's like you're kind of coaxing the clay around. Um, you wanna be pretty gentle with it because the clay is really still incredibly soft. Now there's a couple of considerations that you need to make whenever you're making cups or coming up with a design for cups. Uh, one of them is the width of the, the mouth of the cup or the lip. Um, basically, you wanna have a cup that's um, wide enough at the top so when you take a drink out of it, it clears the longest part of your nose. And the reason is, is that you can sip like this and not tip your head back, but something that's a lot narrower like a, an espresso cup basically causes you to hold, throw your head back. And um, while that might be appropriate for drinking espresso, it's not really appropriate for drinking most things. So I'm gonna go ahead and work this a little bit more. And at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the cup lightly right here at the waist. Because what I wanna do is stretch that a little bit more and now my hand will be a restraint on the outside so I can create more volume on the inside. So I'm gonna take this tool and I'm taking it to the inside and really stretching this clay. Now, one of the things that's really great about pottery is the volume in the interior. Um, people always forget how important that is to activate that space. And I think when you're able to stretch the clay out a little bit and also have these designs that stretch with the, the clay itself, um, sort of emphasizes that sense of volume or um, expanding air in the interior. So at this point, um, it's a pretty good shape. I'm pretty pleased with it. Um, it's time to hit it with a torch because I have to do a couple of tweaking. So I'm gonna hit it inside. and hit it on the outside. I'm gonna test it. Still a little soft. And at this point, um, it's time to start tweaking it a little bit. So I'm gonna get this tool right here, which is just this little, um, rounder, essentially. I'm gonna put it inside so I make sure that that stays round and is very symmetrical and without burning up the wooden tool. And use a torch just below the lip. And that's pretty much fixed it at this point. So it's quite a bit different. I can actually pick it up and you can see in the interior. So this lip is still really sharp and needs to be dealt with. 
So I'm gonna use uh, a piece of chamois leather that I just have soaking in my water bucket. Um, you need to squeeze the water out so it's not dripping all over the place, but you still want it wet enough where it uh, slides a bit. And I'm just gonna roll it over the lip and hold the bottom of the cup while I spin this on the turntable and smooth out that lip. So what I wanna do is eliminate the sharp edge. Um, no one wants to have a sharp edge in their mouth. I mean, it wouldn't be comfortable at all. It wouldn't be very functional. That's pretty good. And at that point, I'll hit it one more time with a torch just to and the pot is almost done. The last thing I need to do is deal with this area right here. You can see it's quite messy um, and it hasn't been sealed. And at this point I can pick up my chamois and go ahead and compress that edge. I do like to have a distinct bottom um, of the pot. I like the fact that this definitely looks like a second piece of clay that's on here, which it is. I don't really want to hide that. Um, this is a slab construction, so I feel like maintaining that um, mark of the process is important. So I'm going to go ahead and just smooth that out. And you can see the clay is pretty soft. It gives me a chance to actually sculpt it a little bit, um, change the gesture, uh, round it off if I need to, because that clay is rehydrated. And that's pretty much finished. Last thing I need to do is uh, sign it. So I use my chop, which is just a piece of bisque clay with my initial on it, and chop it in the foot. And that's it. Um, good luck with making tumblers. I think the templates that um, the, S uh, the St. Petersburg College students have been provided with will give you a whole range of variety of forms that you can do. You can approach it like the way I've built this particular cup, or you could change the bottom, you could change the shape a little bit, um, but just have a little bit of fun with it. Um, thanks a lot for your time.